In the last lecture, you learned the fundamental theory of flex faults, flexible volumes. In this lecture, I'll explain some of the operations that you're going to be carrying out on your flex faults. Starting out with the basic commands, if you're doing this at the command line, to create a volume, the command is volume create. The mandatory parameters are the V server that the volume is associated with, the name of the volume, the aggregate it's going to be in, and the name of the volume. If you want to change any of those parameters later, for example, the size of the volume, the command is volume modify. To rename a volume, it's volume rename. To mount a volume in the SVM namespace, it's volume mount, and to unmount it, it's volume unmount. If you wanted to change the junction path, you would unmount it first, and then you would remount it again. Now, don't worry about all the different fields that you can configure here, because I'm going to be showing you all of these in the lab demo coming up right after this. So we can configure everything in the command line. We can also do all of these tasks in System Manager as well. So like I just said, I'm going to show you these in the lab demo. So if you're wondering, well, why do we have these, this lecture here? It's because some of the other operations that we can carry out on our volumes, I want to give you some more information about those particular operations now. So first one is volume auto size. This allows your volumes to be automatically growing or shrunk based on configurable thresholds. And this is configured at the volume level, so different volumes can have different settings. Three modes are available, which are all pretty self-explanatory by their name. There's off, which is the default. There's also grow and grow shrink. If you use grow, then the volume will grow if it's running out of space. If you use grow shrink, then the volume can go both grow when it's running out of space. It can also shrink if it's not using much space in the volume. The maximum size the volume will grow to defaults to 120% of the initial volume size. You can change all of these different settings. The minimum value there is 16 terabytes. The maximum size the volume will shrink to defaults to the same size as the initial volume size. So what this means is, is if you do enable shrink on there, you're going to have to change that setting because if you don't, it's never going to get any smaller than the initial size anyway. The default growth threshold is at 95% full and the default shrink threshold is at 50% full, meaning if it drops below 50% full, then the volume will shrink. Now, if you're thinking, well, wait a minute, what about when the volume is first created? It doesn't have any data in there. Yes, so this is something that you would turn on later. You've been using the volume for a while. It's already over 50% full, but you think that it might drop. Well, in that case, you could turn on grow shrink as the mode on the volume. And again, all of these are configurable. So you could set the grow threshold and the shrink threshold to a different percentage. Next one is volume move. You can non-disruptively move volumes to another aggregate in the cluster reasons that you would want to do that. Maybe the current aggregate is getting full. Let's say that you have got four volumes in an aggregate right now. The aggregate is running out of disk space. Well, you could move one of the volumes off of that aggregate to free up space. Another reason would be the volume needs to move to an aggregate with different performance capabilities. For example, let's say that we were running a project and we had a volume related to that project. It needed high performance. We put it on SSDs. Now it's some time later. The data is not being accessed so frequently. It doesn't need the high performance anymore. Well, at that point, we could move the volume from an SSD aggregate to an HDD aggregate. And another reason we would do this is for maintenance. Maybe we need to take a node down. In that case, we would move all of the volumes off all of its aggregates. We could move them back later after the maintenance is complete. The way that a volume move works, and this is so that it's going to be non-disruptive to clients. A snapshot is taken of the volume at first and replicated to the new aggregate. 
A snapshot is a point in time copy of the active file system. It's taken very quickly. You're going to learn all about snapshots in a later section. So with the volume move, we take a snapshot first. We replicate that to the new aggregate. When the snapshot replication completes, client access is temporarily blocked during final replication of any recent changes. As I said, this is a non-disruptive process, so the volume stays up the whole time. So while that initial replication is happening, it's quite likely there's going to be new writes coming into that volume. When we do the cutover, we need to make sure that the volume is completely up to date. So we take the snapshot, the snapshot gets replicated. That's going to take some time. There's going to be some new writes coming in during that time. When that has finished, we need to replicate those latest changes as well and make sure that there aren't any other writes coming in so the volume is going to be consistent. So for a short period of time, there is going to be no access to clients to the volume. Client access then moves to the new volume location and the original volume location is removed. So it is non-disruptive, but there will be that short time window when clients cannot access the volume. When entering the volume move command, the cutover happens immediately after replication by default, but you can schedule it for later. So because of that short time when there will be no access, maybe you want to do that during a maintenance window. So you could do the, the bulk of the volume move now, but application, which is what takes the time, you could do that during business hours. And then out of business hours during a maintenance window, you could do the actual cutover, which is going to happen very quickly. When you do a volume move, the volume is still owned by the same SVM. You know that SVMs are our unit of secure multi-tenancy. If we've got a Department A SVM and a Department B SVM, we want to make sure that they don't have access to each other's data. So volumes are associated with a particular SVM. And when we do a volume move, it moves to a different aggregate, but it's still associated with the same SVM. So volume move command only works with moving a volume within the same SVM. It is now possible to move a volume to a different SVM though. That uses a different command, which is volume rehost. Volume rehost is a disruptive command, unlike volume move. And the last thing to tell you about here is deleting your flexible volumes and aggregates. If you want to delete a volume or aggregate, you must take it offline first. And to delete an aggregate, you must move all or delete all of its volumes first. So let's say you just wanted to destroy all of the data in a particular aggregate and the aggregate as well. What you would do is you would take all the volumes offline. You would then be able to delete the volumes. You would then take the aggregate offline and you would then be able to delete the aggregate. Another thing that you might want to do is to shrink an aggregate. It's not possible to do that on the fly. So what you would have to do is move all of the volumes off that aggregate. You would then be able to take the aggregate offline and delete the aggregate. You could then recreate it with a smaller size and move the volumes back that you want to be on there. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp Storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.